Hey, what's up, everybody? How you doing? It's your man, Phil Williams, from the Phil Williams Show. Man, welcome. How you guys doing? Man, I'm telling you, it's a great day today. And I got a lot. I got, got some pretty heavy on my heart. I want to share it with you guys. Hope this is coming through pretty cool. You can follow me, Phil Williams HQ. That's on Facebook. What's up, Jerry Bowerman? How you doing? Ken, what's up? The Enforcer, Ken Thompson. What's going on, buddy? How you feeling? Thank you guys for joining me today. Ken Dodge, how you doing? Ken, that's two Ken, two Kens in a row. Ken Thompson, Ken Dodge. Tom Smarch, Jacob's Ladder, that's Jacob's dad. How you doing, sir? Thank you for all your support. Thank you for allowing me to share your son's story through the music to help other people dealing with drug addictions or any other thing that's impacting their life in a, in a very dangerous and hectic way because we're all climbing out of something. The question is, is where you're heading? Thank you, Tom and Tina, for allowing me to share your son's story my way, the way I do. Laura O'Hara, how you doing, Laura? Appreciate you chiming in. Appreciate you chiming in. Well, I'm not going to keep you guys long, but uh, this, this is what I want to share. You know, as a... Hey, Don. <laughs> hey, I sent you that thing because you said you, you said you might need a little notification, so I sent that to you, Don. Thank you. So, Freya. I believe that's how you say your name. Thank you. Appreciate you so much for tuning in. But anyway, this is why I'm here today. Today I want to speak to you as a true Christian. True Christian meaning unwavering true Christian. The best I can be. Not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But someone that wants to believe that he's principled. Unwavering. Not pop locking and I could just wave and, you know, all those kind of things. I mean, I'm waving in the wind wherever it blows. <sighs> Sin, justify. <sighs> Crime, justify. Whatever. No, I'm not wavering. How you doing, Pamela? Appreciate you, Miss Keith. That's my new Shiro. But anyway, an unwavering Christian to the best of my ability. So I'm speaking to what we want to say is the body of Christ. That's who I want to speak to now, because you're doing something that's very, very disturbing, in my humble opinion. You are doing everything you possibly can, using every justification known to mankind, to justify some of the most hideous things in the name of Jesus, or as a person that says they are attempting to be Christ-like or a follower at a minimum. Man, let me just call a spade a spade. You seat covering, wavering, backwards Christians, justifying every possible sin because you have to protect the seat. It's very disturbing. I'm flipping tables over. Because if you notice something, we have been tricked into flipping tables over in the world. When Jesus Christ flipped the tables over in the church. You've heard me say this before and I'll say it again. I can't say it enough. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So whoever believe in him. The world. See, when Jesus came, part of the thing that got him crucified and hated was because he was calling out the church. He was calling the body of Christ out. He was calling the people that were doing outrageous things in the temple of his father. I am watching. I am listening to Christians doing everything they can that's earthly and worldly and looking for a Christian past because you can quote a scripture. Because you can try to make it relate to some biblical character back then. You're making these ungodly actions justifiable because you can't have Hillary. We can't have a Democrat. I don't want Hillary. I don't want a Democrat. I don't want a liberal. I don't want a communist. I don't want socialism. I don't want none of that. But what I don't want is my eternal soul to burn in hell. That's what I really don't want. I got a question for you Christians. When are we going to get back to thinking 
talking about people's salvation? Do you understand the, the, the hideous movements and justifications you're making? What about people's salvation in Jesus Christ? You cannot continue to put Jesus on the sideline to protect a seat or some kind of Republican ideology Water down conservatism, but more so blaspheme Christianity. What about people's souls? There are people out there that we need to be bringing to Christ Jesus. But how are we going to bring them to Christ Jesus when their response is, but didn't you support a guy that's cheating on his wife? How can you talk to me about adultery? Aren't you supporting somebody who's lying through his teeth? So how can you talk to me about truth? Aren't you wavering and supporting sin? So how can you call me out as a sinner? How is this Jesus supposed to fix me when you guys are even acting like contrary to what you're telling me Jesus wants me to act like? How can you tell me my eternal soul is going to burn unless I accept Christ Jesus and you have Christ Jesus, but you're accepting all this worldly junk? You keep quoting the stock market. Aren't you telling me that Jesus came so we didn't have to worry about things? Aren't you the ones that's preaching to me? Telling me there's going to be a time where money means absolutely nothing? The richest man on the planet can't get a dang thing with his money? Isn't that you that's telling me that? So why is the stock market all of a sudden so much justification for stuff you're telling me is sin? I'm not understanding this. I'm confused. You're selling me Jesus Christ, but you're not even implementing it? You're telling me about the true unadulterated word of God? And I, as a non-scripture reading person, can read the scripture and say, wait a minute, you're doing that. How are you telling me I'm supposed to accept Christ Jesus in your, what do they call that? Um, I heard the word before. Um, aren't you being a hypocrite? Oh, it's okay to be a hypocrite as long as you keep Hillary Clinton out of office. It's okay to be a hypocrite as long as you don't chalk up an L where there should be a W. Oh, it's okay to be a hypocrite. It's okay to not have Jesus because he'll forgive you seven times, seven times, seven. Oh, okay, I got it now. The body of Christ is doing something very dangerous. You're making it very difficult for a true Christian like me. It's not difficult to where I'm not going to do it. But you're going to make it very difficult for us to sell eternal salvation in Jesus Christ. You're making it very difficult for us to show how Jesus came to fulfill the law, to reconcile our relationship back to God that we put all kinds of idols and golden calves and things up in front of. You're making it very difficult. For what? Why? How are we going to tell a sinner the scripture about you gain the whole world, but you lose your soul. You guys are seat covering for this whole wicked world. What about, man, you can go to hell by yourself. What about the people that need Christ Jesus in their life? What about the drug addicts that need to hear the, the good news of Jesus Christ? What about that widow? What about that child or that human being that's suicidal? And they're seeing that none of the physical things that they have is taking away that urge to kill themselves. Is that seat worth it? See, you in the body of Christ, you got to understand something. You can keep following these charlatans if you want. You can keep using the Graham name or, or the Buckley name or whatever the charlatan is selling you this foolishness. That's justifying all this kind of stuff because they're really some kind of undercover white supremacists using the word of God to say that Donald Trump is chosen by God and picked and, and you got to protect Donald Trump. No, you need to, one, 
You Christians that's listening to this foolishness and voting like this and following this, you need to understand the 10 times the heat of hell that you're going to burn in. But you got to really understand the mistake that you're making for other people that need Jesus Christ's salvation. What about them people? I refuse to marginalize Jesus Christ for any politician. That's why I say we the people, not them the government. This government has you marginalizing Jesus Christ. It has you justifying sin for a seat, for a tax cut, for some worldly junk. Get into your word. Know that all this stuff will perish. Know what's going to come a time when God is going to make the rocks cry out and your money can't buy nothing. Get into your word. Now, if you want to do this on your own, fine. But what about those people that need Jesus? What about those people that Jesus said, if the person's not sick, does he need a doctor? That's what he said to them rich folks. To the people that said the lesser of two evils, that's what he was saying to them folks. At the party over there hobnobbing up, wondering why this popular Jesus with all his power is sitting over there with them broke, poor people. Jesus was saying these people are sick. They need me. He was really saying that you need me too, but I got to talk to you on a level that you can understand. I'll just give you a question. Because you think you got it made. You're really more sick than these people. But you wouldn't understand that right now. So let me just appeal to your understanding. If a person's not sick, do we need a doctor? You really think God is going to say, it's okay. You can come in. It's okay if you misled my sheep because you're right. My son, Jesus Christ, me, all the angels in heaven. Couldn't do a dang thing with Hillary Clinton. I needed you backwards country wretched people to defend my son. I needed you to defend love because myself, the omnipotent, omnipresent, couldn't do nothing with Hillary Clinton. I needed y'all to vote that way. I needed you to vote for a misogynistic, egotistical narcissist because, man, I couldn't have done nothing with him. I couldn't have done nothing for America, man, if Hillary would have got in. Good job, y'all. That's what you think God is saying? What about people's salvation? So the question to you true Christians or you so-called wavering seat-covered Christians, is a vote worth, it, worth bringing somebody into the body of Christ to save their soul? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? There's people's souls. There are people that don't know Jesus looking at your post, looking at you justifying this dude with porno star accusations and trying to make it. Oh, he was just trying to bring Jesus. No, he was doing some stuff to make us say, Jesus, 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 in a ridiculous way. But see, you only justify something that you know is close to singeing your behind. You know, you pastors sleeping with choir members, cheating on your wives and stuff like this. Now you're using the pulpit in your status to justify somebody else doing it. Why? Man, trust me, I'm in Atlanta. There is no shortage of people that saying, you're homosexual, all this bad. And then they're being homosexual in the pulpit. There's no shortage of people saying, cheating on your wife is bad. And caught with their hand in the cookie jar and the mouse and rat trap. Slap, what happened? Oh, I just fell short. The devil's mad at me. Oh my God, he's trying to get me. No, you make a decision. It's ungodly, period. You're being exposed. The devil doesn't have the power to do that, but God does have the power to expose you. And that devil demon inside of you is trying to twist the word of God and twist the perspective of people that need God, twist the words of people that are supposed to know the word to justify sin. Sodom and Gomorrah is asking for a do-over when they watch us in our elections. They're saying, God, 
Hold on a second. I'm not saying I'm going to get out of hell with this one, but dang, you burnt this up for something less than that. Can we get a do-over? Now, the world, dope dealers, people that don't have God, that's what we expect. That's why Jesus Christ came to save their souls. But the ones that are supposed to know better, purposely leading sheep astray. And to be honest with you, I'm going to be really honest with you. What this is really exposing is how much words you so-called Christians don't know. But bigger than that, how much you so-called Christians don't believe what God said in his word would happen to a person just like you using the name of Jesus in the book of the Bible to cover up for foolishness like this. You're showing how much you don't know. You want to keep following these Christians that can quote a scripture and still justify the sin that's going on? It shows how much you don't know about the Bible and how much you don't believe about God's retribution. Come on, people. I'm going to give you guys a big secret. You ready? America is not written in the Bible. But land of sinners is. He didn't say the word America. He showed you what happens with a sinful land. He didn't say First Baptist Church of Antioch. He didn't say that. He showed you what happens to a house that falls into sin. He didn't say pastor so-and-so and, and minister so-and-so at. He didn't say that. He said people that use my name in vain. He said people that lead my sheep astray. That's what he said. America, the word America is not written in the Lamb Book of Life, but the individual in America is written in or not written in. Jesus, one commandment he left us with, love others as I have loved you. Jesus would never lead us astray. Jesus led us away from things that would lead us astray. And that's the love that we have to have for others. So when the world has a problem, the world turns to Christ Jesus to solve them, not a voting booth. Carry Jesus with you in the voting booth. Carry Jesus with you when you're watching these charlatans do some packaged, marketed stump speech. Carry Jesus with you. Use the word of God and use that to look through those glasses when a person says, God, I'm answering God's call. Read your word so you know which operator is ringing your line. Come on, people. What about people's salvation? That's way more important than any election any day. As a true Christian, I'm going to appeal to those who might be listening. If you don't have Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you don't, replace your politician with Jesus and watch how your life changes. And for you people that supposedly have in Christ Jesus and still telling people that it's the, got to be the politician that saves America. I rebuke that demon in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I rebuke that demon. And you should too. Because trust me, getting to the gate saying, I'll cast it out votes in your name ain't going to cut it. Yeah, I know the scripture says cast out demons. But these Christians trying to sell you that you got to cast a vote in the name of Jesus. Look to man to save you. When God says, Psalms 118 and 8, put not your confidence in man. Trust in the Lord. I'll tell you like my pastor Jimmy A. Copeland says, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me, Phil Williams, as I follow Christ. Conservatism has its place. Render under Caesar's was Caesar's and God's was God. Conservatism has its place. But Christ is placed in front of that and it'll help your conservatism. 
but more so it'll help you spit out the bones and eat the meat, especially of some kind of backward charlatan that's trying to make you believe that your country can only be saved through a man or a woman. Period. Start flipping the tables over in the, in the church, people. Stop letting these charlatans quote a scripture to you and use that as justification for why you're wrong in your post and why you're off base. And never forget, thanks to Rance Priebus, your groups are full of Democrats that crossed over for the lifelong Democrat that's trying to make you believe it's a Republican and needs Rush Limbaugh's, Shonda Spanks, and Shucky Ducky to give him conservative credibility, Republican credibility. None of them have credibility. Turn the freaking channel off. Don't turn the channel on and hope that you hear something because they can give you that. Turn the channel off. Make a contribution to the Phil Williams show and help turn a different channel on. You don't have to pick any of those lesser of two conservatives or whatever. You don't have to pick them no more. Wake up. Even if you don't pick me, you don't have to pick them. They sold you out. I haven't. Maybe it's a good thing I don't get a million views. No, nah, matter of fact, it's an interesting thing. But I'll be honest with you, I love it if you guys love me, but I love that God loves me even more. And he's given me fine people like you to support me. He's given me a pastor in a church. He's given me Pastor Jimmy A. Copeland. Through my upbringing, he gave me Pastor Larry McClendon and all the other ministers that's helped me throughout my life. But he's given me uh, understanding of discernment, stick to long-suffering, joy, peace, and love for you. I'm a true Christian, people. Not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but Christ is the head of my life. And I'm trying to encourage anybody else that doesn't have Christ at the head of your life. Find Jesus. I invite you out to my church. If you'd like to know where my church is, PM me. Mustard Seed Faith Ministries under Pastor Jimmy A. Copeland. Hey, I love you guys with everything that I possibly have and everything that I don't have. Because if I don't have it, I know who to petition to get it. Our country will be saved once we make sure that our soul is saved. Our country will get better when we understand that somebody eating a Tide Pod should not get a million views. Somebody hand gliding butt naked with an ironing board off of a building should not be getting a million views. When we recognize that what these people are doing to our children and start supporting someone like myself and other good people like myself that's trying to give our children something different that can save their souls at the same time getting them to understand what they're doing with their lives. How they're being hoodwinked and bamboozled and tricked for a like, for a share, for a view, for the monetizing of foolishness. I need your support, people. I need your support. But if I don't have it, I need you to recognize a charlatan when he's speaking and posting. And know that Jesus' father is not there. Because Jesus isn't. How do you know? They marginalize him. Read John 15. Help you out a lot. You'll know if Jesus is there. Because if I am in you and you are in me and things like that, you wouldn't do foolishness. You wouldn't justify sin. You wouldn't make excuses for, for a political favor or election. If Jesus Christ was there, they wouldn't do that. Jesus is not there. I don't care how much scripture they can quote. The Bible says the devil knows the word. He can't function it. And the last time I checked, these people aren't functioning the word. They're just quoting scripture. Hey, not my words. Sorry. Hey, we got souls to save. We got souls to save. Thank you, Pastor, for your words of encouragement. 
Thank you. Because you could have kept it to yourself, but I know you wouldn't because that's not Christ-like. For all you people out there, I appreciate you too. I love you guys so much. I, I don't think you understand how much I love you. I love you a lot. You guys keep me on a straight and narrow by holding me accountable. And if there's some wavering thing in there politically or spiritually, I'm just sharing what the Lord put on my heart. Hey, you can like to make a donation, go to LilJimmyDJPaz.Jimdo.com. Support the programs that we're doing. Support Jacob's Ladder. Support Always Positive Tablets and Teddy Bears. Support Little Jimmy's book. Go to Amazon. It's on Kindle right now. It'll be on full Amazon. It's called I Was Being Told, But Nothing About My Dreams. It's a Little Jimmy book. But more so, rebuke that demon that has you keep turning to them charlatans. Rebuke that demon. I have no heaven or hell for nobody. But I tell you right now, what we're doing as Christians is not helping save any souls to keep people from going to hell. I can tell you that. Hey, again, love you guys. Share this video. Love you with everything I have and I don't have. Follow me as I follow Christ. And I'll do the same. God bless you.